Hello to you all. I am Tanya Pandey for Live Law, and you are watching Quotes this week, our weekly roundup of important court updates. Let us first look at the top stories from the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court on 12th May dismissed a petition filed by jailed activist Gautam Navlakha seeking default bail in the Bhima Koregaon case. Navlakha wanted to include the 34-day period of his unlawful custody in 2018. while computing the period for filing charge sheet under the unlawful activities prevention act for the purpose of granting default bail under section 167 subsection 2 of crpc a bench of justices u u lalit and k m joseph dismissed navlakha's petition affirming the bombay high court judgment and noted that house arrest in this case was not ordered purporting to be under section 167 and thus could be treated as having been passed under section 167 however the court also observed that in appropriate cases courts can order house arrest under section 167 crpc the court said that to order house arrest courts can consider criteria like age health condition and the antecedents of the accused the nature of the crime the need for other reforms of custody and the ability to enforce the terms of the house arrest As regards post conviction cases the court said that it is open to the legislature to ponder over employing house arrests the court also noted that in india the concept of house arrest has its roots in laws providing for preventive detention the apex court also observed that a habeas corpus petition challenging a remand order can be entertained only if the remand is absolutely illegal or the remand is afflicted with the vice of lack of jurisdiction or if it is passed in an absolutely mechanical manner barring such situations a habeas corpus petition will not lie the supreme court has constituted a 12 member national task force to formulate a methodology for scientific allocation of liquid medical oxygen to all the states and union territories in order to deal with the dearth of oxygen supply amid the second covid wave a bench of justices dy chandrachur and mr shah constituted the task force which will be at liberty to draw upon the human resources of the union government for consultation and information and may also constitute one or more such groups on specialized areas or regions for assisting it before finalizing its recommendations The Supreme Court has observed that evidence given by a witness cannot be discarded as a whole on the ground that it is exaggerated. Taking note of the statements made by the prosecution witnesses, the bench observed that even if the exaggeration of multiple acts blows being given to the deceased were discarded, the allegation that the accused entered the house of the victims armed with an axe and hit the deceased on the head and that she died due to head injury was consistent and undisputed throughout the FIR and the deposition by prosecution witnesses referring to Hari Chand versus State of Delhi the bench of CJI NV Ramana and justices Suryakant and Aniruddha Bose said that while appreciating the evidence of witnesses in a criminal trial especially in a case of eye witnesses the maxim falsus in uno falsus in omnibus cannot apply and the court has to make efforts to sift the grain from the chaff the supreme court has reiterated that a court must be satisfied that the dying declaration is true and voluntary and only then could it be the sole basis for conviction without corroboration in this case the karnataka high court reversed the acquittal recorded by the trial court and convicted the accused in a murder case to convict them the high court relied on the dying declaration made by the deceased setting aside the conviction the supreme court observed that several reasons cast clouds on the genuineness of the prosecution case and endorsed the view taken by the trial court the supreme court has reiterated that addition of 40% income must be given towards future prospects while computing motor accident compensation if the deceased was self employed and was aged less than 40 years the high court had held that the deceased in the case was ineligible for future prospects as she was self employed the high court had also deduced 50% towards personal expenses of the deceased the supreme court found fault with this approach 
relying on the five judge bench prane sethi judgment which had held that deduction towards personal expenses must be one third of the income when the deceased was married with two dependents the supreme court reworked the compensation by granting 40% addition towards future prospects and deducting one third towards personal expenses a criminal case cannot be transferred under section 406 crpc merely because the party does not understand the language of the court which has jurisdiction to hear the case the supreme court has held this observation was made by the court while dismissing a transfer petition filed by one rajkumar sabu against whom a criminal case is pending in salem court that he is not being able to understand the tamil language and therefore the case ought to be transferred to a court in delhi the petitioner had also contended that it would be more convenient for the parties to conduct the proceeding in new delhi as a civil courts in connected matters were being heard in the delhi high court only justice anirudha bose noted that the proceedings in the salem court had not been questioned by the petitioner on the ground of lack of jurisdiction but on the ground contemplated in section 406 of crpc the court also added that convenience of one of the parties cannot be a ground for allowing his transfer application the existence of an arbitration clause does not debar the court from entertaining a writ petition the supreme court has observed in this case the allahabad high court had allowed a writ petition filed by cg power and industrial solutions limited challenging the directions issued by executive engineer unnau upptcl to remit labor cess in appeal the court noted that the contract between the parties contained an arbitration clause but there is no mention of any arbitration agreement in the counter affidavit filed by upptcl to the writ petition in the high court the bench reiterated that relief under article 226 of the constitution of india may be granted in a case arising out of a contract now it's time to go over the high court judgments the delhi high court refused to grant interim protection from arrest to businessman navneet kalra accused in connection with the recovery and seizure of oxygen concentrators by the delhi police recently from the khan chacha cafe under his ownership a single judge bench of justice subramaniam prasad turned down the request of senior advocate abhishek singhvi for interim protection after additional solicitor general sp raju sought time to file reply in the matter the allahabad high court has held that using criminal prosecution faced by a candidate as a juvenile to form an opinion about his suitability for appointment is arbitrary illegal and violative of article 14 of the constitution of india Moreover holding that an employer cannot ask any candidate to disclose details of criminal prosecution faced as a juvenile a single judge bench of justice ajay bhanot also held that the requirement to disclose details of criminal prosecution faced as a juvenile is violative of the right to privacy and the right to reputation of a child guaranteed under article 21 the observation came in a petition assailing the order dated 3rd september 2020 passed by pac eta wherein the petitioner was found as being not suitable for the post of constable by the competent authority the patna high court on 12th may issued a slew of directions while observing that the government hospitals medical officers are bound to extend medical assistance and failure on the part of even private hospitals to provide timely medical treatment to a person in need of such treatment results in a violation of his right to life guaranteed under article 21 a division bench of chief justice sanjay karol and justice s kumar issued a direction in a clutch of petitions concerning the covid-19 situation in the state and also highlighting the issues regarding availability of medical infrastructure covid medicines and dearth of oxygen supply among other news observing that it is prima facie apparent that tahir hussain used his muscle power and political clout to act as a kingpin in planning instigating and fanning the flames of communal conflagration a delhi court on saturday dismissed his bail applications in two delhi riot cases additional sessions judge vinod yadav denied the bail to hussain 
in two FIRs in relation to information received by Sushrat Trauma Center in relation to gunshot injuries sustained by Pramod and Prince Vansal. The court did not find merit in the argument put forth by Hussain that he has been falsely implicated in the matter or that there is no legally sustainable evidence available against him. That's all for today. I hope you're healthy and happy and taking good care of yourselves. I am Tanya Pandey for Live Law. Have a great day. Subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon to never miss a video from Live Law.